know who better than these four women to inspire everybody tonight. I want to give you all the opportunity, if there's any questions from the audience, this is your opportunity. Do you have questions this evening? Yes. Is there a microphone? Hi, good evening. My name is Sunil. Wonderful stories, hats off to every speaker. Hi, Karan, how are you? Uh, just wanted to know, Karan just mentioned that 17-year-old blind girl, you know, achieving their her dream, and Karan just walks in as a god in front of her. You tell me, <laughs> you guys tell me, you being a woman, I'm in the field of education, how can the generation, the masses, this country can go ahead when it comes to women's education? Thank you. Who would like to start with that? The government yeah. support. I, Very I, important. I don't understand the government is going, you know, leaps and bounds. Uh, you tell us of an excuse of plan if you have something. Well, uh, in, in uh, again, coming back, sorry, to what I know and what's uh, my area uh, of expertise is the field where I work is uh, beauty. And I make sure that there is certain education. I have paid a fee to learn this, uh, this art. And I make sure the women uh, team members who are coming in, we educate them absolutely <coughs> to this topic. And that's my uh, part which I am I'm trying to work on. Uh, well, when you say about talking about overall uh, education to the masses, definitely we need government support. And why I'm, I use the word government so that this message goes loud and clear, the, the wellness industry also has been approaching the government to help us with the funds to take this ahead. That's how, that's the only way out we can, we can move forward and uh, uh, today all the ladies sitting here, if we decide, that we need to open a school tomorrow, definitely we need funding, and we don't want men saying, oh, there, they open a school and they fail now. And also I feel, uh, you know, uh, when expats come to India, they immediately enroll into an NGO and give a chunk of their time every day. Now, even if we don't give a chunk of our time every single day, at least we can give a chunk of our time every single week. I think uh, social responsibility, CSR, should be a mandatory part of our lives. Uh, why should an expat have to come into India and do it? And I, I know enough and more women who spend a chunk of every single day at kitty parties, faffing away all their time. I think all those women with loads of money and diamonds could be giving a little bit of what they earn to uh, uh, female emancipation, education of women, and uh, generally educating women. And what uh, she said and what she does do, which I'm aware of, is employ more women Other questions? <coughs> no other questions this evening? No? Perfect. Well, you'll have an opportunity to mingle and meet these women later on this evening. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Karan, and thank you, Nitish. This is a beautiful platform. I am woman today. I have an 18 year old, and I feel they really need to progress and stop thinking, ke, okay, get her educated and get her married. That's not me. I just feel they need to progress, and once they start progressing, the whole world is going to change for our India. Actually, that's what it is. If you educate a girl, I think you educate a family together. Yeah. Any career wise profession, have you uh, faced any kind of difficulties career wise? Any woman? Not really. My husband has been very supportive. My family has been very supportive. My father has always put in the thought that you don't need to be in the kitchen all the time first. You need to be yourself first. So it has been a really smooth journey for me. What does beauty mean to you? Beauty has to be, you know, and it cannot be meaning, ke, okay, what are you looking at and what is the product that you're using, what you're carrying. It's, you should be very beautiful from the able to accept people happily. That's what I feel. Thank you. Beauty Police is the online beauty destination partner. Can you just say your name and the, my best wishes to Beauty Police? Beauty? Or beauty Police. Okay. okay. Hi.
I'm Palak Shed, and all the very best to all the beauty parlors. Thank you. How do you respond to that? Women are that provides them an, them an edge over the men. So I feel if we think like women, I think we do a better job. I don't think, and I think that's a that's that's the symbolic order that needs to change. So I'm not going to go into the whole jargon of it, but the reality is that we have to stop thinking of strong, weak, good, bad man, woman. It has to change. And so I don't believe that you've got to think like a man, or you've got to think like a woman, or you've got to think like. I think you've got to think like a human being, and today you've got to think like an environmentally conscious human being. I won't say what they're supposed to think like, but I feel what generally happens is, uh, I'm talking about what I observe, is that women do have a tendency to try and be like men. And when they do that, they, I suppose, get overly harsh at times, overly aggressive, um, you know, um, a bit too competitive. And I just feel taking a cue from exactly what the the rest of the panel has said that we just need to be ourselves. If we are good at something, we should, you know, we should um, uh, show that to the people. If we want to say, speak our mind, we should say that. We shouldn't try and compare ourselves with anybody because, um, you know, competition can happen with a woman. I can try and speak better than her. She can try and, you know, outdo me. It competition is there at every level. As long as it's healthy, it's good. The man and woman bit. When we start focusing on that, I feel that creates a problem. Think in your head, you need to know what you want to say. Don't try and be like somebody else. If you're good at what you're doing, you are going to be accepted. You are going to be a winner. So that's interesting. Yes. Sometimes more like men. And one of my areas of, of research and specialization is body language and nonverbal communication. And that's actually one of the things that we teach in body language classes for women do gestures and, and spread out sometimes in a boardroom at a meeting. Women tend to be very close and keep their information close in their papers, and it's about spreading out. So it's, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. Like sometimes we should be acting more like women, and it's precisely what we do is to try to empower women. We sometimes in certain societies and cultures teach them how to act and have gestures that are more like men, which is unfortunate that we have to take on that. <laughs> Very good. Now, the second statement is emotions and nurturing skills affect women's businesses. And I want to start with Lucky on this one. Uh, yes, it's proven that uh, our, emotion and our emotions and nurturing skills do get in the way because we are mothers, we are sisters, we are daughters, and especially in India. Uh, we are brought up to think like girls, uh, to be more demure, to be more submissive. Uh, what happens is in, uh, in the business world, investors, executives find it very frustrating when women bring that aspect into business. Because um, in times of crisis, they tend to uh, be, get very mild, they get very uh, soft, and they do not take harsh or quick decisions or drastic decisions that are needed at that point uh, to make that change. And that could be pretty frustrating for male executives. Ranak, would you agree? What are your thoughts? I, I actually, to some extent, I think we have two qualities that uh, that do come instinctively. I think that probably uh, you know we're predisposed, and one of those is prudence, and the other is compassion, and, and it does come uh, a little bit more naturally to us. So we have to always think. The female of the species is to think about the offspring, and so the prudence comes uh, in there. Both of these, I think, used well are outstanding advantages. There are advantages in how you grow your business. There are advantages in how you grow your team. Um, I also think that the same two uh, character traits in a lot of uh, uh, female women um, can also work exactly the opposite, where the 
compassion can be one of your over uh, compassion is or not with the right level of judgment can also be one of your feelings, as can prudence, because it holds you back from taking the right risk. Interesting about the, the traits. Uh, and that's an area we're really starting to explore in, in the world of careers, is the use of neuro tie-in in society. Davida, what are your thoughts on this? It's interesting when they say emotional, like it's a bad thing. Mm. Because if you look at the Western world, some of the brands, some of the businesses are so cold, so impersonal, that they're turning to countries like India and saying, you know, what is it that you can add that really connects with your consumer? How do you connect with your employees? How do you connect with people who are listening to you? And when I entered the technology business, like uh, as a teenager, actually, and one of the things I felt is all about the science. It's very tech. It's very boring. You know, there's really no life to it. And being a creative person myself, uh, I said, you know what? How do we do it differently? How do we make it about how do we make it about senses? How do we make it about something that you connect with, something you enjoy, something you want to talk about, something that makes you feel proud? So bringing that feeling into your business because it connects with, connects you uh, to your customers. You know, yesterday, just last night, I was hanging with a bunch of friends, and when someone introduces me, I'll just usually say, oh, I work for this company, VTV, and we do marketing. And I never say that I started it or I run it, because I like to get the, you know, real feedback. And the person said, oh, view, oh, I'm a huge fan of the company. And in my head, I was like, yay. One hour later, he's like, so what do you do at review? What is your job role? <laughs> like, uh, I started it, I run it. It was interesting, he used the word huge fan. It's very rare to, for people to use that for an yes. almost boring technical product. Mm -hmm. So where women really bring in is, you know, sort of, I always said that sort of men draw the line and women fill it with color. Mm -hmm. So it's emotion and nurturing skills are fabulous. It's what the world needs, you know. We have such dull businesses out there. I'm glad so many women are in it and just changing the game. Great. Yeah. I wish say that line again. I think that's, that's the line of the night. It's a beautiful line. Could you really say it again? It's a beautiful the one of women filling in, filling the line with colors. I don't know how you framed it. It was beautiful. Men draw the lines and women fill in the colors. That's the line. I think it's a beautiful line. Perfect. Harita, what are your thoughts? I am all emotions. Yeah. I'm here because uh -huh. I have a career because of emotions. I'm, I'm, I am who I am because of emotions. And uh, uh, and I love having the emotions. I love being a woman because I have the emotions I do. And I am not ashamed about it. I feel uh, a woman should feel the way she feels. Uh, you were initially talking about the whole offspring part. I want to take a step back when I have a baby. It's my decision. My husband is not telling me. My in-laws are not telling me. I am telling me. I don't want to work for a year. But I didn't work for two years when I had my baby. And I was a hardcore working woman. Uh, some people, I don't know why it becomes an issue to be spoken about. It has to be a decision. A lot of men take that decision. I think when they have their child, I mean, I think few in India, but many abroad, <laughs> they do take that decision. They say, okay, I don't want to work. I want to be a home dad or whatever the name is. And I think it's perfectly okay to feel that way. I'm not ashamed of it. Second point again about uh, emotions, I feel women having the emotions in business, I don't run a business, but I feel that also helps. It can be a deterrent uh, sometimes, uh, like uh, Lucky was saying that, you know, people get frustrated, you don't, uh, you know, perform in crisis. I see it differently. People, women, because of their emotions, get a lot of loyalty out of their, uh, you know, out of their team. The way you behave with your team, the way you support them in their time of crisis, I think you get a lot of loyalty also. So women's emotions work uh, in, a, in, um, in an organization. Yes, sometimes in a negative way, but that also happens with men. Men also have different things. Sometimes men are far too aggressive, far too bold, far too, um, what is it called, harsh, uh, you know. So I think, you know, emotions is just emotions. It, it works well sometimes, whether it's from women, or from men. So it's just the way you use it to your advantage. It's a really good insight from your own experiences. Now, I want to start with... Uh, I'd like to add here that um, having said that uh, our emotions and nurturing skills could be a deterrent, uh, the other part of uh, what I feel is also that being women, being emotional, being nurturing, 
uh, we are also better at long-term relationships. So we hold relationships better, uh, which puts us at an advantage. So we understand customers, we understand uh, consumers, we understand government, we understand economy, and we understand children, and we understand household expenses, uh, which makes us good business women, uh, you know, just being there. So that is an advantage, because we are good at long-term relationships, at understanding people, and in the beginning I said we have better common sense and instinctive powers, so that gives us an edge. So of course, emotions do work, and nurturing skills of course set us apart as women and do give us an edge.